Christopher Ray Preciado. That was Christopher Ray Preciado, and he didn't look too happy during his high school graduation at the lack of applause he got. And it looked like he dropped the F-bomb at the camera. Like, F! Like, what's going on? You guys aren't applauding for me? Is that what Christopher does when he doesn't get his way? I can't believe one of the culprits, allegedly, in the crime, the horrific murders of Savannah Soto and Matthew Guerra was all over weed, allegedly? We'll get into that when we read the affidavit. Is there any connection between Christopher and Matthew and Savannah? Was Christopher jealous of Matthew and his beautiful girlfriend and the fact that Matthew and Savannah had a baby on the way? What the heck happened? And who threw that towel to Ramon Presciano? He's Christopher's father. He's also been arrested as a party to the crime. I know we're not crazy, we saw what we saw, and we have a lot of questions. In fact, I just watched that security video again and again for who knows how many times I've watched it, and I see the point where the door to the Kia opens, and I see reflections on the car door of the Kia, but after that, at some point, a towel comes flopping down. I've even considered the fact, did the towel fall down on its own? The motion that towel makes towards Ramon seems like someone handed it to him, expressly and directly for a purpose. The cops are claiming these are the only two suspects that they were going after and they got them. But that doesn't mean someone else wasn't in that truck, that Chevy Silverado, and we know for a fact it is a Chevy. Was it a child? Was it a wife? Was it a side chick? Was it someone who was granted immunity and cut a side deal with the cops in order to tell the information they knew in exchange for the information they may have known? Or perhaps just an innocent party who didn't know what was going on? That would be unlikely. I know Sergeant Washington Moscoso kind of stuttered really hard when he gave the information about only two suspects. These two individuals are to are the only sus suspects that we were looking for. He said these two individuals are the only two suspects that we were looking for. Okay, well, maybe that towel happened to flop down on its own. Maybe it was just kind of sitting in a precarious position and it kind of fell down. But to me, the towel looks like it flopped down, like someone either in the passenger seat of the truck or the back seat of the truck wanted to stay off camera and gave it over. I don't think that's wild speculation that viewers noticed. I think it's true. But for whatever reason, the cops may not want to say it. Maybe they want to keep this person protected. Well, let's look back at these suspects. Happy birthday, Christopher. That's what the cupcakes read that were designed to look like a guitar cake in the shape of a guitar in a photo from September 9th, 2012. I really don't want to say the name of the mom. I don't know if she had any involvement in this at all or if she knew anything about what was going on. But at that point, little Christopher was surrounded by eerie artwork. There's a skeleton straw. That's why I don't like that kind of stuff around me. I know it's all fun and games people think for Halloween and all these things. But I don't like being surrounded by dead things that are a harbinger perhaps of things to come. But Christopher would grow up to develop a love for eerie artwork, especially some artwork I saw on his Facebook where it was kind of like finger guns to the head. He's apparently a Call of Duty fan who nicknamed himself Angel or someone gave Christopher the nickname Angel, but today people are looking at him as more of a demonic being after his arrest. The news broke and is now going wild. Today is January 4th, 2024. So Ramon Presciano is 53 and his son, Christopher Presciano, is only 19, arrested recently for the crimes. And info is changing as I speak. More charges are being added. So the two guys are pictured in that happy birthday Christopher celebration with a woman, I presume, is Christopher's mom and Ramon's wife. So Christopher was born on September 7th, 2004. So he would have been a little gentle-eyed, eight 
eight-year-old boy just staring with uncertainty at the camera on that day. His dad looks a lot different as we all have grown over time, but he looks much different 20 years ago with his thick head of hair and a lot slimmer than when he showed up in that surveillance video. And from the more recent video of his perp walk, well, that guy was saying some crazy things, but we can tell he is overweight and he probably definitely was the guy who was in that video not wearing a fat suit or anything like that. Are you sorry for what happened? Did you know Savannah was nine? Did you know she was pregnant? Always pregnant. 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 Always well, tell you us. just made stuff up like always. Tell us. What's going on? Did you shoot them? Did you are shoot you them? them? Are you in the video? Baby. Did you kill them or did you just hide the evidence? How'd you know Savannah? She's gonna guess. Was it retaliation? You're sorry? Who killed it? If it wasn't you, who was it then? Back on May 10th, 2020, Ramon wished his wife a happy Mother's Day through his Almighty Air AC and Heating Company Facebook page. He also has TikTok videos too. But that day he wrote to my beautiful wife, love you, enjoy your day. To my mom and all the mommies have a blessed day. So apparently Ramon runs this Almighty Air AC Heating Company and he has a lot of videos here and there on TikTok, some on Facebook, but he really doesn't show his face. You only hear his voice talking about different HVAC problems and stuff. Warning, went to a customer's house, found drain line 100% clogged, serious damage to home. Call now, 210. All emergency calls are $69. Water flooded the hallway and the closet. Careful when you let contractors work in your home. Painting, tiling, or you also wind up with this all over your home, all over your unit. And you want to be that stuff. That stuff will put you in the hospital. So call Mighty Air if you ever, ever have any issues. But don't let contractors work in your house with the AC on, or you might end up with one of these. Your father loves you a lot. This is Almighty Air Air Conditioning and Heating from San Antonio, Texas, checking out a customer system. Train system, brand new, four, four years old. Haven't been service in four years, and this will happen, guys. Primary part bad, swollen, leaking. Y'all need to be checking out this thing and servicing it every six months to a year. Almighty Air, shine out. This is Almighty Air with another system to fix. Frozen as hell, but damn, beer as ice. Now, of course, it. It's 110 outside and this thing's still frozen, guys. Please check your systems. Almighty Air. I can just heat it. Holla. Yo, this is Almighty Air with another system for a customer. Bad coil needs to be cleaned ASAP. Filter clog, drain line clog needs, needs to be cleaned. So we're gonna deep clean right now. I'm about to get down on this. Look how much y'all inhaling right now. That's bad. It gives y'all headaches, give you earaches. If you need to give you bloody noses, holler at me, 2 and 0. Hey guys, all my dear, hollering now back, San Antonio, Texas. But the wife and the mom here on Facebook, she had asked an interesting question on December 27th, 2013 in a comment 
she posted on a photo that she posted of four young men. She wrote, you want them? I deliver, lol. So it's not clear if Christopher Ray Preciado is one of the boys. He could be one of the boys with his back against the wall with his hat tilted sideways. So he would be really young still at that point. He would have only been a nine-year-old just trying to act tough, you know, acting so tough and hardened. I hate to see photos like this too of young people who should be out like jumping in rivers and playing soccer, you know, kicking the ball around and having silly fun instead of just like posing like wannabe thugs so hard and living that life. And it's a very poignant photo. Was this his mother walking hand in hand with Christopher? He has really long hair, you can tell. A long braid down the back. On April 2nd, 2012, he would have been a seven-year-old back then. And the way the duo are walking hand in hand, and there's a bridge in the background, and their backs are to the photographer, it's in black and white, and it's just kind of eerie. I feel bad for this mom, of course, if there was no involvement and just this unexpected tragedy happening and all of a sudden her husband and son are locked up. I'm grateful the cops got the would-be perpetrators though. Christopher even posted a comment, aw, so sweet, on a photo of whom I presume to be his parents on March 19th, 2015. He included an emoji of heart eyes, so he would have only been about 10 years old back then, not afraid to leave comments on his parents' Facebook and express emotions. And then, like in the opening video, on June 5th, 2023, at 6.30 p.m., Christopher Ray Preciado graduated from John Marshall High School in the 72nd commencement of the Northside Independent School District in San Antonio, Texas. So we saw him, apparently a jury of his peers back then, just really maybe didn't know who he was or he didn't have a great reputation or maybe not a lot of friends, but he did not get huge applause. And you can tell that bothered him. Like, ah, F, you know, like you guys aren't giving me a standing ovation or whatever. Morgan Helena Pratt. Christopher Ray Preciado. Grace Victoria. I tried my darndest to find out, was there any connection between Matthew and Savannah and Christopher? Why would Christopher do this? I know Savannah, according to her family, dropped out of high school, unfortunately, when she met Matthew. Um, I'm texting back, what's her name? Mom. I'm texting back, bro. It's a idiot. Oh. Her name's, um, Savannah. Oh, oh. <laughs> I the bunga bunga. Savannah, that sounds like a wife. No, she's Mexican. Bro. Yeah, she's Mexican, so I can tell her an accent. You know when she be talking and shit? Like the one that came from Mexico recently. Yeah, she, she was from Guadalupe. Where's the pickles? You guys want some cider? Who? Like the pickles. Pickles? Steven's this one? Him. Steven's breastfeeding him. <laughs> <laughs> Steven, you're breastfeeding the baby? <laughs> 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 It's real, he's calling you. Hey. He's mad as fuck, right? I took the back from him. No, I'm not kidding. Hey, Mom. Hey, Mom. Hey, Mom. Hey, Mom. Hey, Mom. Hey, He was just, I'm sorry, I know he's a victim as well, of course. He just was no good for her. I just think of this destructive path. She was only 15 when they met, apparently, and he was, what, four years older, and that's why Savannah's family has spoken out about not liking the situation, and we know there was domestic abuse involved. Savannah met Matthew, she dropped out of high school, she's only 15, he was four years older, he was about that life, there was a domestic violence situation, and now unfortunately, Savannah, Matthew, and their baby Fabian are gone. It was just this horrible path, in my opinion, meeting him. I'm not saying anyone deserved this horrible tragedy to happen to them though. But I keep trying to find out where everyone went to high school. I know Savannah dropped out, so I don't expect a graduation video of her. However, I kept trying to find Matthew's high school. I wanted to see his graduation walk and see if he got, you know, a huge level of applause. And, you know, I know he was 
really loved, of course, by his family. And I wanted to see what was his popularity like? Was he very popular in high school? And, you know, did Christopher compare himself? Did they go to the same high school? I don't think so. If I'm not mistaken, Matthew may have gone to a different high school, but I could not verify. I couldn't find the actual entire PDF of the commencement address like I found for Christopher. Nearly exactly to the day, seven months after he graduated, the 19-year-old Christopher would be arrested for capital murder and there's other charges being added. Now Christopher and his dad, Ramon, these two perpetrators lived only two minutes away from where Savannah and Matthew and baby Fabian were found their unborn baby on Danny K Drive in that Kia. Sleuths have already found different Google Maps images of that Chevy Silverado truck in the driveway of the house on Charlie Chan Drive. That's where Ramon and I presume Christopher both lived. We'll hear more about that house when we read through the affidavit. So indeed it was a Chevy Silverado. I know a lot of people were commenting thinking it was a Ford, but it looks like it definitely was a Silverado. If you look at court records, we will see Christopher Ray Prashado. We see his date of birth. They list him for some reason as a white male. He was arrested January 3rd, 2024 at 1730 hours. So I have to do that in my head. So at 530 p.m. apparently he was arrested and his intake time was pretty late, almost midnight. Reportedly, Christopher was the trigger man. I think he's trying to claim self-defense and Christopher told cops this fanciful story about how it all went down. I think he's going to try to claim self-defense but cops already aren't buying it. Christopher apparently was the trigger man and right now reportedly Reportedly, his total bond sits at $2 million on top of the capital murder charges of multiple people. Christopher Ray Prashadio. The last time I checked the court website for Christopher's charges, it only listed a million dollars in bond, abuse of a corpse, altered destruction, concealment of human corpse, a felony in the second degree. But I'm sure they're adding as we go. And then there's Ramon Presadio, also known as Ramon Ray Presadio Jr. Now he was born March 31st, 1970. It has a race of L, I'm assuming that means Latino, Latino male. So I'm not sure why Christopher is listed as a white male. Things can change over time in the court records. Apparently he was arrested around the same time yesterday, January 3rd, 2024 at 1720. So just 10 minutes prior to his son being arrested. But still, I keep asking, like many of you are asking, who threw Raymond that towel? Are our eyes deceiving us? No, I don't think it's the reflection on the door. I definitely see the motion in that towel kind of going like this, flopping over. But those are the only two people cops are looking for, and they got them. They did say it was a narcotic-related deal that went bad. And cops also talked about collecting Savannah's cell phone at the scene. I didn't even know they had her cell phone and the Secret Service helped them and detectives found a possible location of the suspect's truck. They visited the house, knocked on the door, Ramon answered and he already knew why the cops were there. Seems like they took them in without a big incident. Christopher Ray Presadio is listed as a 19 year old white male also on VineLink. Now his information, they are showing an in custody status. They show the arrest date and all that stuff. They allowed me to sign up for updates for him. But Ramon Presadio Jr. living in San Antonio, 53 year old white male VineLink says, for some reason they have him listed as out of custody. So it says due to the current status, updates on this record are no longer longer available. If you have questions, contact the reporting agency. Now, I don't know why VineLink says out of custody. So some people are freaking out on Facebook and like, oh no, Ramon already posted bail and he's already out. And I don't know if they had that much money to post bail. It could very well be just the system hasn't caught up yet and they haven't input all the information or sometimes I've seen it, especially in cases like this that go viral. They might not want to keep these two at the Bear County Jail, because of the notoriety, they might end up moving them to a different facility like Richard Allen in Indiana. So sometimes when that happens, there's an out of custody period before they're moved to an undisclosed facility or just trying to keep it more private and not letting people really know what's going on. I don't know, we'll see. I'm just grateful SAPD arrested them for the murders and when 
They were doing that perp walk. Thank God for the cops. They gave the press their time, a lot of time. That long perp walk, you could see them say, here they come. First, Ramon comes out and he was saying weird stuff. You couldn't necessarily catch what he was saying based on the video from SAPD, but from other news stations, you could hear. Ramon is like, always fake news. You guys are always one side. You don't even know what's going on. And then he tells a reporter, please don't push me. And the reporter says, I'm not. And Ramon is saying, not you. Mainly they're asking, do you have any remorse, anything? She was pregnant. It's close to Christmas. Why did you do it? Are you sorry? And then Ramon, yakking along, ain't you sorry for lying about what you saying? You don't even know what's going on. You just make stuff up like always. And the reporters are saying, well, tell us. You know, at this point, the perps were just walking out. They didn't know who was arrested for what. They didn't even have the little presser yet. Of course, they assumed Ramon and Christopher were both the actual murderers. But it's very weird and it's very off-putting for Ramon to go fake news and you know you just think of all the hurt for Savannah's family, for Matthew's family, for everyone looking forward to Fabian's birth being the first grandchild for some members of the family. It's very sad and just imagine them watching this guy walk out like oh fake news. Ugh. Anyway Christopher kept his mouth shut. Now, perhaps you, like many of us, thought Christopher was a woman walking out with that long, luxurious, glorious hair. And maybe if he was the one driving the Kia, maybe he did have it up in a ponytail. And that's why people like me thought Christopher was really a woman. But the cops said it was a drug deal gone wrong. We don't have a lot of details about what exactly went wrong. And of course, we might not find out because of this yarn, this tail that Christopher is spinning to the police. But the police did say December 21st, just before midnight was when the murders happened. So that was actually Thursday night. So folks said maybe Savannah's mom got a little confused. I think she thought she spoke to Savannah or got a text from her Friday morning unless someone was using her phone. I don't know what was happening there, but it's easy when a person's a witness and they're out of their minds with worry and grief, they might get the days wrong. So this likely happened according to the cops Thursday night. So Friday went by and then Saturday, Christmas Eve's Eve, that was the day she would have gotten induced. She was supposed to be induced. And that's when the attention really grew and Savannah's mom really knew something was wrong. Now there is a Ramon Ray Presadio. I saw a deleted Facebook page and I was wondering, when did he delete this? It says he works at Lowe's Home Improvement. He was a sales associate at Ross Dress for Less. He was followed by 186 people. I don't know if that's the same guy or if this guy just, you know, went incognito as soon as the crime hit the news. Um, I saw a brief mention in the Savannah Soto and Matthew Guerra case discussion group on Facebook about, I believe Christopher may have joined the Facebook group perhaps on December 28th, but that is a common thing. Sometimes perpetrators will join Facebook groups to see how much people know. Let's take a quick look at this affidavit for arrest warrant. Affiant. Affiant. So I'm pronouncing it affiant the way Google says I should. And this affiant detective Jeremy Goodwin, a peace officer makes the following statements. So they talk about a victim, being identified as Savannah Nicole Soto. She was born August 22nd, 2005, victim number one. And then there's Matthew Gabriel Guerra. He was born October 21st, 2001, victim number two. And the actor in this case identified as Christopher Ray Presadio, date of birth, September 7th, 2004. He's the defendant. It is the belief of Detective Jeremy that Christopher committed a capital murder of multiple persons December 21st in Bear County, Texas. So Detective Jeremy is explaining on December 23rd, 2023, Leon Valley Police received a call for a missing person report. A family of the missing person stated she was supposed to be induced for her pregnancy and and didn't show up for her appointment. The family advised they had not been able to get a hold of Savannah and stated she was not answering her phone. A check of the hospitals was conducted by the family and it was found that the female was not at any of the hospitals. It was found that the female lived with her boyfriend. However, the family of the boyfriend advised they were not able to get in touch with him as well. The female was entered as a missing person by Leon Valley. Further investigation found that the female and her boyfriend were not responding to any phone calls and their whereabouts were unknown. 
Media broadcast on the news the story of the missing female and her boyfriend in the media. The boyfriend's car description was broadcast in the media and was said to be a 2013 gray Kia Optima. On December 26, 2023, a resident of 5903 Danny K Drive messaged the family of the female and advised them that they believed the vehicle was parked at 5903 Danny K Drive. So yes, that 5903 Danny K Drive is the Seven Oaks apartment home. So we don't know exactly, of course, who texted Savannah's family, but the family contacted Leon Valley and drove to the location. Upon Leon Valley police arrival to the location, Leon Valley police observed the vehicle. Inside of the vehicle was a deceased pregnant female in the front seat and a deceased male in the back seat of the vehicle. San Antonio police were contacted and Detective Jeremy made the location. Upon arrival to the location, Detective Jeremy observed the vehicle. It was a 2013 Kia Optima with a Texas license plate of TRC 9447. So Detective Jeremy checked the VIN number and the VIN number was the same VIN number that had been broadcast on the news for the missing couple. And a check of the info through the NCIC TCIC showed the vehicle belonged to the boyfriend of the female so they knew it was Matthew's Kia. Detective Jeremy observed the front right passenger side of the vehicle, and he observed a deceased pregnant female inside of the front right passenger seat. Due to Detective Jeremy's knowledge of the female on a previous murder case from 2022, that must have been her younger brother Ethan's case, Detective Jeremy recognized the female to be that of the missing female. The female appeared to have trauma to her head. Detective Jeremy then observed the back seat of the vehicle. He observed a deceased male in the back seat of the vehicle and he resembled the boyfriend to the female. The male had an apparent gunshot wound to his head. It appeared the male had been dragged into the vehicle. Detective Jeremy did not observe any weapon near the male. A search warrant was requested so entry into the vehicle could be conducted. While waiting for the search warrant, Detective Jeremy spoke to the families of the female and the male. It was found that the boyfriend to the female sold narcotics and would use his phone through cell phone communications as well as social media to sell narcotics. It was advised that the boyfriend would post money and narcotics on Instagram. Now it's interesting they didn't mention Telegram here. It was stated that people wanted to rob the boyfriend and it was stated that the boyfriend had been shot at before. Now I did not know that Matthew had been shot at previously. So dangerous, you know, like a walking target, a walking mark. And then to be on social media with all those stacks of cash, it's almost like just come get me, come rob me. The family provided Detective Jeremy with the phone number of the female. The family of the male provided Detective Jeremy with his phone number as well as his Instagram. When the search warrant arrived at the location, a search of the vehicle was conducted. The search found spent shell casing in the vehicle. However, there was no weapon recovered in the vehicle. That just says spent shell casing. It doesn't say shell casings here, but it could just be something incorrect or maybe a person took one of the shell casings and couldn't find the other. Who knows? There was apparent blood transfer on the outside of the vehicle that was not consistent with the boyfriend causing harm to the female. Both the female and male had gunshot wounds to the head. It doesn't say where in the head here. And the male also had apparent drag marks on his back. It was believed that the female and male were killed at a different location and the vehicle was driven to the recovered location. During further investigation, Detective Jeremy found video surveillance video at 5903 Danny K. The video surveillance found that on December 21st, 2023, around 2359 hours, so that was really close to midnight, very close to midnight on December 21st, like one minute away from midnight. A Chevy Silverado gray driving with its lights off from the vehicle recovered location. I did notice the Kia had its lights off coming towards you know, the video. I couldn't tell if the truck had its lights off, but it made sense because it, I guess, wasn't reflecting light onto the fence. The Silverado pulled in the middle of the back parking lot and parked the vehicle. The victim's vehicle could be seen approaching the Chevrolet Silverado. The victim's vehicle parked next to the Silverado. The heavyset male exited the Silverado and the driver's side door of the victim's vehicle opened. The heavyset male approached the driver of the victim's vehicle and appeared to speak to the driver. Now, listen to the way this is written. 
The heavy set male then get a towel from his vehicle. The heavy set male then get a towel from his vehicle and appears to wipe down the outside of the victim's vehicle door where he had touched the vehicle. That's so weird. They just said the heavy set male then get a towel. I am assuming he meant the heavy set male then got a towel, but it's just so obscure. I know cops saw what we saw. I know they saw that towel kind of being flipped over or handed to him, but it wasn't written that way. It just says the heavyset male then get a towel from his vehicle, whatever. The driver of the victim's vehicle exited the vehicle for a brief moment and sat back in the driver's seat. The driver did not match the description of the female victim or the male victim. The Hispanic male got back into his vehicle. The victim's vehicle vehicle drove behind the building where the vehicle was found on December 26, 2023. The Silverado followed the victim's vehicle. Approximately three minutes later, the Silverado was observed leaving from behind the building where the victim's vehicle was found. The victim's vehicle did not leave the location. So they stayed there about three minutes. So they met up, Ramon got back in his vehicle, the victim's vehicle drove behind the building where the vehicle was found on December 26th. The Silverado followed the victim's vehicle. Only three minutes later, the Silverado was observed leaving from behind the building. I'm assuming Ramon came to pick Christopher up. They drove behind some building and maybe they did more wiping down or talking or whatever and sneaking. We, we don't see this part on video yet. They haven't released it yet, if they have it. The victim's vehicle stayed in that location and then the Silverado left, I'm assuming with Ramon and Christopher in it to go back home. It was believed that the victims were already deceased in the vehicle at the time of the video observed. It is believed the unknown driver and the heavyset male observed parked the victim's vehicle at the location in an effort to hide the vehicle. Affidavits aren't always written in a way that's really clear, but at least it's enough to get the facts out there and make an arrest. On January 2nd, 2024, Detective Jeremy provided one of the victim's cell phones to Detective Knox at the Technical Investigations Unit. On January 3rd, 2024, Detective Jeremy received the phone download from Detective Knox. Detective Jeremy found that the victim, they don't say which one, had recently searched, had recently searched the street of Charlie Chan Drive. I'm assuming Savannah searched that. They don't say victim one or two, but they had Savannah's phone, so I'm assuming it's Savannah's search. Due to Detective Jeremy's knowledge of the crime scene area, he was aware that Charlie Chan Drive was a couple of blocks away from the victim vehicle recovery location. So Detective Jeremy was able to discover that the victim's vehicle pinged near Charlie Chan Drive and Cary Grant Drive around 2350 hours on the night they went missing. So Detective Jeremy discovered the victim's vehicle pinged near Charlie Chan Drive and Cary Grant Drive around 2350 hours on the night they went missing. So yeah, that's really still 10 minutes away from midnight and the vehicle did not start moving again until around 2354 hours. The vehicle then traveled to the 5903 Danny K Drive where the victims in their vehicle were discovered on December 26, 2023. So first of all, all these movie star street names, Charlie Chan, Cary Grant, and Danny K must be a thing in this area. But secondly, this all went down so fast. The victim's vehicle pinged near Charlie Chan Drive, so that would have been at 11.50 p.m. on the night they went missing. It didn't start moving again until 11.54 p.m. So it pinged near Charlie Chan Drive. We don't know if they were like in the driveway at that point, but it started moving again four minutes later and then it traveled to that location where the victims were found. But Detective Jeremy conducted computer research and was able to locate a vehicle that looked identical to the suspect vehicle seen on camera with the victim vehicle. So he probably just looked up, maybe he was scrolling down Google Maps and he saw these same photos of the Chevy truck in the driveway that we see on Google Maps. Detective Jeremy did research on the owner of the vehicle and found the owner of the vehicle matched the description of the male that exited the vehicle on camera. So he got a photo of Ramon and he's like, yeah, this looks like the guy. 
Homicide detectives went to the vehicle location listed above and found the listed vehicle at the location. So the Chevy truck was just right there. While at the residence on Charlie Chan, a person identified as Ramon Pusadio reported knowing why SAPD was at his residence. Ramon informed SAP detectives to speak with his son, identified as Christopher Pusadio. So Ramon gave up his son like that. Ramon might have allegedly helped his son, but he was like, look, I'm giving him up too. There's no honor among thieves, as they say. Cops showed up. Ramon was like, I know why you're here. Go talk to Christopher. Ramon and Christopher were transported to SAPD homicide to speak with Detective Jeremy while additional SAPD detectives searched the residence on Charlie Chan Drive under the authority of a search warrant. I just wonder if anyone else was home. Detective Jeremy spoke with Ramon after Ramon was read his Miranda warnings. Ramon admitted to driving his Chevrolet Silverado to 5903 Danny K Drive where he met Christopher. Ramon identified himself on surveillance video from 5903 Danny K Drive as, as the person observed exiting the Chevrolet Silverado. So he's like, yeah, that's me. Ramon reported meeting Christopher at this apartment complex who was driving another vehicle. This vehicle is the vehicle in which Matthew and Savannah were found deceased. Ramon admitted to assisting Christopher at 5903 Danny K Drive. Ramon knowingly treated the human corpse of Matthew, Savannah, and the unborn child of Savannah named Fabian in an offensive manner by leaving them in the abandoned vehicle. Detective Jeremy then spoke with Christopher after he was read his Miranda warnings. Christopher reported Matthew and Savannah drove to his residence on Charlie Chan Drive to sell Christopher marijuana. Christopher went on to provide a version of events that were inconsistent with evidence collected at the scene and from the victim's recovered vehicle. Christopher claimed the male victim pointed a weapon at him and Christopher was able to manipulate the weapon resulting in the female being shot. Christopher then stated that had the weapon pointed at him again, that's what it says. Christopher then stated that had the weapon pointed at him again and he manipulated the weapon again resulting in the male victim being shot. Cops know this is a bunch of hooey because they've previously told us there were contact wounds and I believe they said at the back of the head. So a contact wound really close up somewhere in the head that doesn't sound like oh you have a gun and I'm ooh, I'm able to flip it around at you and quickly shoot you and he's trying to claim Matthew I guess had the gun and Christopher's claiming Matthew had the gun and pointed it at him and Christopher was able to turn it around and resulted in oh no Savannah got shot and then allegedly Matthew pointed the gun at Christopher again and and then he manipulated the weapon to shoot Matthew that makes no sense for him to do that twice and create two contact wounds and yeah, like cops say, Christopher's statement is inconsistent with the gunshot wounds suffered by Matthew and Savannah and the evidence located at the crime scene. Christopher intentionally discharged a firearm at Savannah and Matthew with the intention of causing the death. The actions of Christopher resulted in the death of Matthew, Savannah, and Savannah's unborn child named Fabian. So that's it. So that's the violation of the penal code of the state of Texas, they believe Christopher intentionally caused the death of multiple people and he's given them quite a line, quite a line of bull here. I'm surprised they told him as much as they did. I guess they had to admit, yeah, that's us on camera, but I believe Christopher's going for some self-defense. It was maybe a sneak attack. Cops told us in the presser last night, okay, it was a drug deal gone wrong, but what does that mean? Did Christopher not have the money? Did he intend to rob them all along? Did they pull up to Christopher's house? Did Christopher get in the back seat or something like that? Close contact wounds. Was he able to, uh, it gets graphic, but was he able to first take out Savannah? And then did Matthew run? What are these drag marks about? Did Matthew jump out of the car and run for, for fear? Did he take out Savannah first there in the front seat and then put the baby car seat up there? Did Matthew jump out of the car and run for fear of his life because he knew he was next? And was Christopher by himself able to like drag Matthew back in and then shoot him in the car when all this was going on around midnight? Did it not make any 
any noise? Did people not hear the gunshots? Were there no more on that Charlie Chan drive? Were there no more videos or evidence of this going on? Were neighbors so used to hearing gunshots that it didn't really phase them? Was Christopher able to pull Matthew in the back seat and then shoot him there and then drive the car off to a different location? And how did his dad get involved? Did Christopher run back in the house and say, Dad, come follow me or come meet me here? Or did he text him? There's so much more I want to know how this happened and of course why. It makes no sense whatsoever. But then we see a warrant of arrest. You are hereby commanded to take the body of Christopher Ray Persadio, last known address on Charlie Chan Drive in San Antonio. Just take him in. And now we have the state of Texas versus Christopher Ray Persadio. What's going to happen next? I was trying to find their next appearance dates and everything. I don't know the next time they're going to appear in court, but hopefully justice will come soon and swiftly because what a horrible crime. There's, it's just absolutely senseless. It's a dangerous thing to be involved in narcotics and living that life, showing off cash, ill-gotten gain, filthy lucre. None of it is worth it. No house, no car, no whatever is worth living your life that way. That's one thing I hope, especially young people, anyone sees from this case, the way it's gone so viral that it's just not worth it being in that life. If it is just over marijuana, I mean, it can't just be over marijuana. Maybe it could be, I mean, marijuana is legal now in Ohio. I mean, I don't know if it is in Texas, but it's just ridiculous if it were just over marijuana. It has to be over something much deeper, evil. Maybe it was a theft. Maybe, yeah, Matthew was a big target. People wanted what he had, flaunting this cash, flaunting possessions, whatever. Isaiah 54. The Lord God has given me, his servant, the tongue of disciples as one who is taught, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. He awakens me morning by morning. He awakens my ear to listen as a disciple, as one who is taught. Those are the words in Isaiah pointing to the Messiah, Jesus. Maybe those words can help awaken the weary and comfort the weary and sustain the weary. This crime, oh, it's so horrible. People are just, especially a baby involved in this madness. People have a lot of heated emotions all over the place. All I know is this is very sad and I always look for the why even though we might not find out that why. Because what excuse, what reasoning could Christopher ever have for doing this? And this cockamamie story about, you know, Matthew pointing the gun at him and him flipping it around and shooting Savannah and then getting you know, the gun pointed at him again and, oh, I had to shoot Matthew. Well, I think if more video evidence comes out, maybe that'll fill in the truth about what really happened. Was it just a sneak attack? Was this still some kind of revenge? Are there any connections here or was it just greed and evil and I'm going to take out this couple and their unborn baby just because? None of it makes sense but I hope it serves as a cautionary tale to not focus on material things and not get in deep in dangerous stuff just for the visual just for the gram for the telegram for Instagram for I don't know for that lifestyle it's just better to me to be bored at home and praise God if you have enough food and hot water lights, the little things. I mean, these are big things. Freedom, we have our freedom. These are big things to me. We don't need much more beyond all that, especially we don't need to go trying to get it through illegal means because, oh my goodness, look what can happen. And of course, this could have happened if they weren't in that life. So this is in no way victim blaming at all. It's just very, very sad. And I hope a lot of people see it so they know don't go this route. So let's see what will happen to Christopher and Ramon. Looks like no one else will be arrested. People thought, people got confused. They thought since in the presser they said more charges would be coming. Some people thought that meant more arrests. But nope, looks like only these two. I don't know what was up with the towel and who else may have been in that Chevy truck. But obviously police aren't concerned about it. So maybe it's some confidential informant or whatever. Let's just hope the perpetrators can get through this justice system quickly and efficiently and that Matthew, Fabian, and Savannah can get their justice and God, Lord, help, help their family members and help all those who love them and miss them and just to make it through. Oh, Savannah's poor mom. I just, ugh. Her dad, her stepmom, all of her loved ones. I feel so bad. And especially with 
just losing her brother, Ethan, not long ago, within about a year or more ago. It's just horrible. I just pray for God to send them comfort, that peace that passes all understanding that you can't even understand because I don't even want to know their pain. But we can feel for them and we can cry with them, weep with those who are weeping, mourn with those who are mourning, and we can keep praying for them that justice will be served. And even Christopher to get some kind of help, like if he did this and his dad being so flippant with the fake news without any remorse or compassion. I mean, that reporter was just like an unborn baby, right? before Christmas, you know, people are like, how can you do this? And it's just like, oh, fake news. You guys are liars, blah, blah, blah. Let them have a come to Jesus moment. Let God meet them in their jail cells and eventually their prison cells and, you know, come to some kind of repentance and remorse and tell the truth about what the heck happened and offer some apologies. And that doesn't mean they're getting out, just stay in there. But my God, where's the humanity? Thank you for watching. We'll keep up with this case and other cases. I'm glad the perpetrators are caught. Amen. Make a hole, guys. Watch out, guys. Make a hole. Está saliendo el segundo. cameras okay. 
Good evening, everyone. I'm Sergeant Washington Moscoso, W-A-S-H-I-N-G-T-O-N-M-O-S-C-O-S-O. So the individuals you saw this evening, the first individual's name is Ramon Preciado, 53 years old, SID number 443-651. The second individual was Christopher Preciado, 19 years old, SID number 119-1061. So the two individuals we, we, uh, we just walked out today, again, is a father and son. The first individual is a father. The second individual is a son. Uh, they're going to be charged. The, the father's, uh, I'm sorry, the son's going to be charged this, this, afternoon, this evening with capital murder. And the father's going to be charged with abuse of a corpse. So we do expect uh, more charges to be, uh, to be pending. So I'm not going to go into the whole thing. We, we all know uh, what kind of led us to, this, to, to where we are today. Um, I will say that when we recover or when when uh the bodies were discovered on danny k uh obviously the investigation began sapd detectives made that location and started collecting evidence um one of the key pieces of evidence that we did collect at the scene was um savannah's cell phone and uh so our that was given handed over to our tech our technology team, who was able to do the, download some information on there. With the assistance of the U.S. Secret Service, we were able to get enough information. Um, and so that, that information was given to our detectives today. With that information, the detective, uh, detectives were able to uh, find a possible location of where the, the suspect vehicle that was released on that, on that surveillance camera, the surveillance video, a uh, possible location where that suspect vehicle might be. They made that location, and sure enough, the vehicle was there. They did a little bit of surveillance on the video or on the on the uh, vehicle, and then um, were able to determine which house it belonged to. They went up, knocked on the door. Uh, the fir the first gentleman, the, the I'm sorry, the the first individual, uh, the father answered the door. He knew why the police were there. Um, was was cooperated fully with the investigation. We're right here to headquarters, and our detectives were able to start interviewing both the son and the father again they were both at the home they were both brought down here and the and the um interrogations began um through interrogating the individuals the uh our detectives had enough uh based on what they said there was enough information there to get a warrant signed by a judge tonight again to charge christopher with capital murder and ramon with uh, abuse of a corpse. Again, there will be more charges pending. But this is what we have right now. I'll answer any questions you might uh, have. Did you the capital murder for the son and then abuse of the corpse charge for the dad? Does that mean that you guys believe the son killed them and then the Absolutely. dad helped hide the bodies? Yes, yes. And um, so I, I want to touch base on something real quick. The, since the release of the video that we set, that we put out on the 28th, uh, there has been, internet has blown up with um, people sending tips and people just sending misinformation. There's a lot of misinformation out there. These two individuals are to, are the only sus suspects that we were looking for. They, they were arrested. There were many names being thrown around on the internet. Uh, those people had nothing to do with this. We, we vetted them and, and everything. They, they didn't have anything to do with these murders. So the individual, the, again, Christopher, uh, we believe committed the murders of, of Matthew and Savannah, and then Ramon uh, helped kind of dump the button. Um, it, it appears to be a narcotics, a narcotic related deal that, that went bad. Do we know the connection between this father and son and Matthew and Savannah or the uh, connection to the apartment complex? So there's no apparent connection to the apartment complex. It's just a place where they want to go dump, uh, dispose or hide the vehicle with the bodies in it. And it appears that um, the, it was a drug deal. So there was like a drug connection to the, uh, the suspect and the two victims. It's just when you um, hide, hiding the body, moving the body after after uh, discovering that and all that kind of stuff. Yep. When he killed him, what exactly? So uh, the the um, December twenty first, which is a Thursday, just before midnight, is when the actual murders took place. Uh, on that. Mm -hmm. And is, are they going to be charged for the baby? Because in the state of Texas, technically, they could be charged. Right. So the um, like I said, there's going to be possible charges pending, more, more charges pending. Our detectives are going to talk with the Bear County DA to determine if they're going to be any charges facing. Uh, they're going to be facing any charges related to the unborn baby. And do we know if she was dilated at all? If, or if I didn't have that information from the medical examiners. I know that she was scheduled to be induced 
uh, and she didn't make her appointment, which is why the, the family went to the police to make the, to file the missing persons report. Did he say where, where exactly they killed them? I don't know how exactly location. Or we just know that they were killed from a, at a different location and then taken to that the apartment complex to um, to dispose of the to dispose of the vehicle and the the bodies. I know there was some Spanish questions. I wanted to knock out real quick. Sí, podría darnos un resumen pequeño para la audiencia hispana de de estas personas que presentó. No, no se pregunta si Nada más unas preguntas. Si tienes preguntas a particular. ¿A quiénes presentaron esta noche? Sí, esta noche el el primer señor que, que salió es eh, Ramón Pre, Preciado, de eh, 53 años, y el segundo es Christopher Preciado, de 19 años. Uh, Christopher Preciado um, um, es el que hizo el, los asesina, asesinatos de, los, de las víctimas, y el, su papá, Ramón, uh, ayudó en... Um, esconder o tratar de esconder el, el carro y, los, y las víctimas. ¿Las dos personas eran las que aparecían en el video de vigilancia sí. que presentaron la semana pasada? Sí. Ajá. ¿Había un motivo para matarlos? Parece que, parece que había una um, transacción de drogas que, que no fue que fue mal, que fue mal, la, tracción de, la uh, transacción de drogas fue mal y resultó en la muerte de las dos víctimas. When you say drug deals, you mean, were they buying or selling? Do you know what? Well, I mean, someone was buying and someone was selling. So it was a, it was a drug. Can a man be charged with these murders uh, through the complex theory or the multiple parties theory? I'm sorry, could who? Uh, Ramon the dad. Could he be charged with the murders as well through the complex theory? No, he was not. He was not there during the commission of the murders. He was there kind of, I guess he was called afterwards to help dispose or help his son. Did in, these two have previous records? I'm sorry? Did these two have previous records? Uh, Christopher has no previous criminal history, and Ramon did have a small, um, he had some, some prior criminal history. So are you all done looking for suspects at this point? Yeah, we don't have any other suspects that we're looking for. And then that surveillance video, were they alive during that surveillance no. video? No. They were not alive? They were not alive, no. Okay. Last question, guys. Christopher killed them and they moved their bodies to the car? Correct. Well, I mean, I don't know if he moved them into the vehicle. Um, that they, The vehicle with the bodies in was driven to that apartment complex. It didn't happen at that apartment complex. So ultimately, who's going to make the decision on the final charges? Is that going to be the DA's office? Correct, yes. So uh, our, our detective, again, tonight are charging them with capital, uh, Christopher with capital murder and Ramon with... Uh, abuse of a corpse. They're, they are working on some other charges that they're going to uh, file. Uh, but regarding, I think, specifically the question that you had about the, the unborn baby, they're going to have a, a conversation with the DA to determine whether they can uh, charge or um, put the baby as another victim on this. So does that say that you have any say whenever they talk to the DA's office? Absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's a collaboration with our, with our DA's office. Would you say SAPD is going to seek that third charge for the unborn baby? Our detectives are going to do everything they can to, to bring justice to the family. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you all for coming out tonight.